guys, welcome to today's podcast, the Accelerate... Uh, you got it wrong again. Yeah. We were told high energy, and what happened? You, you just couldn't hold it together. Over your words. We've got Stuart Hale, myself, Harvey Martin, and Harry Stevenson behind the camera this week. Hi, Harry. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, wasn't high energy. That was, was not it? high energy. I think we've been told we've got to be more high energy. We've had some gurus giving us some advice. We even took some goos. Yeah, we even That's did probably that the too. problem. Yeah, <laughs> especially the high caffeine ones. Yeah. Don't have too many because it's a different sort of high energy. <laughs> it's a sprint. Mm. <laughs> so today's episode, I think we've got some questions in. Stu wanted to talk about some shoes that have arrived. Um, yeah, it was also not just the shoes, actually. I'm going to go and play. Oh. I, I'm doing an old man test. Okay. And I'll explain all in a minute. But, but before I do that, something that was really excited was, uh, yeah, was it just over a week ago we had um, Team Accelerate represented at the Manchester Half Marathon. Mm. I love a good big city race. Yeah, me too. And I have to say, I think the Great North put on a event and a half i think there's stuff we can all learn from it and they look after everyone in my opinion from the guys at the back running for charity health and obviously for a lot of them a, a massive sense of achievement right the way through to the elite and they put on that spectrum of races that kind of cover that off um, but from our point of view more importantly um, we had jonesy chris jones mm -hmm. and we had paddy patrick wright um, towing the start line. Yeah, both kind of first half in a long time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think for Paddy it was three or four years, wasn't it? Yeah, if not, maybe well, slightly longer. It's been yeah. a while. And then Chris hasn't really ran one. I know he did Sheffield a long time ago, but kind yeah. of before he properly started running. Yes, um, and we were kind of very interested in how they go. And as you know, I'm not really a numbers man. I'm all about actually getting people fitter first. Mm -hmm. And we kind of had an idea where we think they should be running. That you kind of get to the maths, don't you, a little bit? And then it kind of just, just yeah. Let's let's come up with race objectives. One of the race objectives actually was that we set them the goal. We've been talking a lot in training was a negative split. So what we mean by that is you run the second half of the race slightly quicker than the first half. Um, some would call it conserving energy I guess you could say that but it's just the ability to maintain a pace or just actually gradually pick it up as opposed to a positive split where you go off too quick and the effort forces you to slow down yeah and let's be honest Chris is very good at the positive split and he was almost a master I'd say yeah and um, he's had some stick hasn't he from you guys yeah you, you've not let him forget it you're not going to start this rep off too quick quick are you Chris and all that malarkey going on um, so that was one of the objectives. The other objective, from my point of view, is see how the strength to the technique and form was holding up mm -hmm. um, towards the end of the race. And I positioned myself with about four, eight hundred meters to go um, at the end of the race to see how that was looking. But we had some really good positive outcomes, yeah, which absolutely. was really, really good and for the guys. Probably not the ideal day. It was the first, one of the first really hot weekends we'd had. Yeah, it was about twenty-two degrees um, by the time they finished. And kind of in the city, that feels very hot with all the tarmac. Yeah, and the and reflection off the buildings and yeah, things. But we've not had loads of that yet, so maybe a little bit warm, but maybe they stood up well to that. Still quite still. Yeah, very still. Um, so yeah, good good day all round. Yeah, well we had um, Paddy did actually um, run a PB by over a minute, I believe it was. Yeah. So he clocked through at about one twenty one, and he was still able to give me the thumbs up as he came through and a bit of a smile, or was it a grimace? Not sure. Same say. So. So, yeah, um, but again he looked really strong. Um, technique was still good and was, it was still flowing mm -hmm. um, and then Chris we kind of all thought that he should be running around the 115 and he actually ran inside that and ran a 114 so he's actually come away from that really chuffed uh, and and a three second negative split which yes. on a course that goes downhill on the way out is yeah no mean feat for anyone so. I'm, I'm just so pleased for him and he was so pleased with that afterwards we had a celebration yeah. because it was his birthday as well so happy birthday Chris and we had a celebratory birthday brekkie after um, both the guys were really really chuffed with that um, and from a heart rate point of view as well there was minimal drift mm -hmm. um, that's another topic we can talk about some other time and um, from an effort point of view you could see that the pacing was just pretty much bob on so yeah it was, it was a morning of sunshine and smiles it was hot in the city and a good day for a PB. So, yeah, and I think Chris also, was he sixth? Seventh. 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 Second. So, second. Third old, old git. You, <laughs> you know how to say that, but yeah. Well, 
<laughs> yeah, we'll call him that. He won't so, mind. And again, also, um, as you know, he can suffer from wobblyitis. Super strong at the finish, and he really was bouncing along. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, and they've just had a week off, so back on it this week. So, nice rest, and I think Chris has had some time away, and, and Paddy too, and they'll be joining us again next Saturday, I hear. Yes, it'll be good, good to get yeah. them back. Yeah, good thrashing. Nah, ease them back in, ease them back in. So, yeah, so there we go. So, I hope your racing's gone well. It'd be good to hear from people what they've been up to with yeah. racing. Anything different or unusual? I no, for myself, there's been lots of fell races happening the last few weeks. It's definitely, season's kicked it off. Oh, hasn't it? It's um, gone mad. Especially locally, like evening races are suddenly back on, which is always nice to see and good to go watch because they're short. Yeah, with the blessed with the weather as well. Yeah, um, yeah, we've had some amazing weather for racing. Yeah, we have, which perhaps we could say for the water levels isn't so good, but from a sitting outside and having a nice Fast time dry it's trails, really it's good oh aren't they dry yeah i mean we were over um Hellcurt moor and we just couldn't find any wet at the weekend yeah it was just it did grounds cracking but yeah some good quick times out there again the local yeah. boys always do quite well though don't they it's a good representation at the top end yeah and then we've got Duddon this weekend which is the second in the count yes i think it is so it'll be interesting to see who goes there and what comes out of it because that's quite a tough if it's hot yeah. that's a, a long tough race actually as, it, as we get into fell season i tell you if you're watching mr bond we need to get you on and you can come and talk about the fell season and your past exploits that'd be quite interesting mm -hmm. so yeah so that will be good so anyway, um, we keep talking in the, over the last few weeks about running shoes. Yes. And we keep, obviously there's a trend for people wanting um, soft shoes. And obviously what we're seeing is, is the size of the midsoles and the stack height. So the height of the midsole kind of getting in well into the 30s and sometimes... Well, we've seen even 45. 40s, haven't we? And I keep trying these shoes and keep putting them on my paws, and mm -hmm. I don't get them. I don't like running in them. And I keep thinking it must be something to do with the fact that I was brought up on shoes like that. That's for the a casual shoe audio listeners it's a new balance it's shoe. A 420 420 what do you reckon the stack height through the heel is 15 20 mil and 10 i'm gonna go 18 and 18 about and 10, 10 11 in the forefoot so quite quite stripped back compared to shoes of today yeah i suspect the 420 would have been in their competition range okay so still a racing shoe so probably more a racing shoe um but the point is, even in the forefoot, you still would be talking no more than 18 mil. Mm -hmm. And that's what we call a cut EVA. And that was, once upon a time, a state-of-the-art shoe. And that's how we viewed it. And all the technology was going in into the how they made the shoe and the thing called combination, board, and slip lasting. I think that's a slip lasting shoe. So the board's at the heel, not at the forefoot. And um, we had all sorts of strange technologies coming through where they put cuts into the board and they said, we've made it more flexible. And it was a high flex shoe, but still stable. So we would expect this type of shoe, probably 300 miles. Mm -hmm. Racing shoe, probably a couple of marathons and you start again. Um, and yeah, like I say, they were once state of the art shoes. And I kind of was brought up on these. And I can remember the first Nike Tailwind, the first Nike Pegasus, Equator, Internationalist, Internationalist or International, running shoes, and they were the kind of almost the first that we had available. Then Reebok and Adidas and Asics were around. Reebok, British brand at the time, with Phase One, mm -hmm. Two, Three, the Royale. Um, that's another one I can't remember the name of. Black and Red. And I can remember buying my first pair of shoes from Olympus Sports. Didn't look a lot different to that. Nine ninety nine. I can remember the day. Ten wow. pound. How times have changed. Oh, haven't they? So, and there's a lot of research gone into where we are with midsole materials. So, let's stop reminiscing. I guess get rid of that. No, I won't. And um, <laughs> just throw them away. Um, and obviously, with the increased stack height. There's a demand for that we need more cushioning and it it's like why so 
I did give a pair of high cushioned stacked shoes a go a little while ago and I just didn't like them and I just found they were too soft there was this so called new feeling of responsiveness where you lose it in the shoe you push there's your push is gone so i really don't get it and i know you guys have got some of the ones that you love and there are definitely some that you don't like cause yeah you're... yeah like i where it's got ones which are quite nice like i know that they slow my foot straight down a little bit but i don't find them bad like i can still run quite yeah. quick in them and they feel all right um and they definitely for me feel like they look after my legs a little bit more especially on longer runs yeah i get that um but, but then yeah then there are some that I don't quite get on as much with, but that's like any shoe. Um, yes, it is, and uh, I, I mean, there's there's some interesting research being done, and there's actually there is no scientific or medical argument that says having a too soft a shoe is a good thing. It's all negative, and they actually, I think it was in World Gymnastics or Sport. I'm pretty certain it was that they swapped out the harder mats for softer. And the injury rate increased mm -hmm. so they popped back harder ones in and the injury rate decreased at competition so which is interesting when we're talking about elite super fit obviously athletes that used to lots of rebound yeah so i thought i'd do a little experiment so i thought i'd take some modern shoes um but a little bit more stripped back and it also gives us a chance just to talk about some of those um and i'm gonna split it between a kind of a hybrid so trail road shoe and a couple of road shoes. Mm -hmm. um, Do you want to start with the road shoe side of it? Yeah, and I'm actually going to start with... It doesn't come into their racing category, which I find really odd. So the Saucony Sinister. Sinister. Yes. Sorry, go on. I can't not say yeah. that. It, it, it's quite evil. <laughs> yeah. And it, I think it weighs about something like five ounces. Yeah, it's not a heavy I'm going to keep talking in old money today. Okay. No. <laughs> Some amount of grams. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, not a lot. 200 would that be? Less than a bag of sugar. <laughs> a lot less. Yeah, one of those little bags. Yeah. It really weighs absolutely nothing. And I don't know whether you can see this on camera, but the mesh is virtually see-through. So if I put a socked foot in there, I can see a socked foot, which was a bit odd. I reckon you could go sockless in it as well. I think you're probably right, because the, there is a lack of seamage, yeah. which is nice. And obviously it's very, nothing there really to hold. So it's a P-Bax midsole, or as I call it, the polystyrene cup look. It's slightly firmer now that they're getting to grips with what they can do with the p material. So it's slightly firmer than a lot that we see. And mm -hmm. I've made some notes here. So it's actually got a stack height of 25 and 19. Mm -hmm. And I may not be as fast as I was these days, but I'm actually gonna go and do a little bit of fast in that as well as a little bit of ploddy. Nice. I imagine it'll feel better when you're running faster. Yeah, I'd imagine, I don't know. Um, gonna find out I've had, a, I've had a quick spin on the treadmill in them as you can see because i've got this bit mucky and i like quite liked it so it's the first p-back shoe i've put on my paws and gone ooh. and i suspect it's because it's a little bit firmer mm -hmm. and it did feel that when i pushed um i wasn't kind of losing that push into the shoe as which is interesting because actually pushing your thumb in, it feels like quite a soft shoe still. yeah it does so they've it's definitely done something like, special with the the mid -cell. It's still but it feels very boingy mm -hmm which obviously compared to shoes have gone by, you didn't really have that boinginess. So I'm really quite intrigued what that's going to, to feel like. I'm not expecting that to be the shoe with the longest life though. No. Because the, the outsole is clearly... And the uppers, well, yeah. it, it looks sturdy enough. It's still quite lightweight, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I don't normally go through uppers, to be fair, so I'm hoping that will remain intact. But the outsole, I wouldn't be surprised if that's gone in 300, maybe more. And it'll be interesting to see what state the midsole's in. Mm -hmm. So that's the first one we're going to have a play in the, in the Sinister. And then the other one that uh, I'm going to have a play with is the new Escalante. And this is from Ultra for people from Ultra can't see. Zero, yeah. So that is zero drop. Um, I don't mind a zero drop shoe. Um, I'm really intrigued by the upper because there's very little vinyl overlays in that, and I think there's some recycled content in this shoe. Mm -hmm. um, I need to check that because I can't remember. It's obviously 
quite a soft shoe, a bit similar to the um, Sinister in that respect, but it's a more traditional EVA midsole, the Ultra Ego, which I thought was quite clever. Mm -hmm. Um, toe shaped, which again, I don't have a particular foot shaped. Foot, foot shaped, I don't, yeah, sorry, foot shaped. I don't have a, a leaning towards or against. Yeah. Um, very nice on your foot, I must admit. Um, and we've got stack height of that at 24 mil. Yeah. I have to keep looking at my notes because it's numbers. Yeah, yeah. As it, for people who can't see it, it looks like a much sturdier shoe. Like the upper is a bit more traditional, like Stu said. Um, you tell it's on your foot a little bit more, it's yeah. less like a spike. And it, I mean, hang on, if I get rid of the, the gubbins in the middle of it, it's still fairly light, but it's nowhere yeah. near as light as the Sinister. Yeah, it's definitely going to get more mileage from it for the yes. lifespan. Like, there's a good good rubber on the outsole. I'd agree. So, yeah, probably 500 so, um, miles, aren't you? I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. Mm. Um, and of the shoes that we've act I'm actually going to be playing in, um, they're both around that sort of similar stack height. Yeah. Yeah, so definitely. So very, very intrigued look. just to see how that goes. Looks nice. Yeah, I was saying both look more minimal in today's market. On the wall, they look very slim yes. down. But again, for me, that looks a lot. It looks normal. Yeah. It doesn't look too big, too small. It's, <laughs> it's just right. It just fits what I think a shoe should look like. Mm -hmm. that's, what, that's how I view it. But don't make it right, don't make it wrong, it's just what I think. Better go run some miles, eh? Yeah, I think so. I'm not quite looking forward to running some more miles. It's been a while since I've done that. <laughs> and then I'm going to have a play around with a couple of trail shoes. Um, yeah. And you know I've run already in these, but... Oh, yeah, I think we've both, both had a few pairs yeah, of these. Yeah, um, but nice. I am going to switch down on the Scott. So I'm going to do the Scott next. So the actual shoe I'm showing you here is the Kinder Blue Ultra. And that's an 8mm drop shoe. I'm going to try the racing shoe version. Yeah. Which I have had at the very first one they did. And I've still got a pair on the go, but I'm going to get the new pair. Yeah. And give them a whirl, which is, I think, the third version, isn't it? Yes, the yes. Old, Scott Kinder Blue RC3. And that's a 4mm drop. 3mm three three drop shoe. 3mm drop shoe. And that's got a stack home. You have to look it up. Of, no, they are saying 21 and 18.5. So, yeah, 3mm. Yeah. It's my mat. Yeah. No, uh, they're, they're good. I got a pair last year. Yeah. Uh, they're good. And they're quite, like, I use them to race in. They just feel like there's not a lot there to get in the way and easy to run in. But yeah. you're so definitely going to be able to put them to the test. Yeah, so it's definitely it's going to be a little bit less under your foot than that, but it is very much an off-road shoe. Slightly different upper. Um, and the outsole, though, is virtually identical. And that for me has even at eight dollars become a fairly go-to shoe i really really enjoy running in that and it has that combination of um responsiveness it's not too soft not too hard i just love it yeah and it really is a go-to and um, with the winter we've had and certainly now i'm not out of it really yeah no the yeah both and the ultra and the, the rc they've done lots in them yeah they're just easy easy nice on my feet straight away and feet, like the ultra feels plenty cushioned yes. enough for long days and I must admit, the new engineered upper on this is just, yeah, it's lovely. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? So, yeah, but I'm quite intrigued with what's going to happen with, the, if you like, the RC version, the full 4 mil drop. So, uh, even less, even yeah. less. So, yeah, quite excited about giving that one a whirl. Um, and then, I suppose the shoe that almost is that little bit deeper and everything else um, is the Nevos Elements, which is a, again a road take with a little bit more, get rid of the sticky bit on the bottom, good prep, with a little bit more grip. And I've been using that a lot around here. Um, I have actually taken it out to the Peak District as well already, mm -hmm. um, but I'm not going to tell you what I found, not yet. Um, but from a it's 24 14 so that's got the biggest heel to four foot drop with the true motion shape though it's not a traditional yeah, 10 mil no. shoe is it by any means that's how they've measured it so you actually sit into here so it does feel lower and the idea is that as you run and you drop back onto the heel from a mid strike you actually sink a little bit more so you create more balance to create more push mm -hmm. um so I'll be interested to see how this, this one runs um, because it's a slightly updated version, isn't it, than the one I've had. Yes, it is. 
So I'm going to be seeing what the changes are and I'll give you a report on what that's like around canals into the Peak District mm -hmm. in the drier conditions because I wouldn't recommend that we go out in the mud in that one if you look at the heel. So we'll see how that runs by comparison to the others. So I've kind of come in and said, right, I'm going to take the stack height down. I'm going to reduce the amount of cushioning that we see a lot of customers demanding. And I'm going to tell you how my legs feel. Okay. And I'm planning, really trying to take each shoe um, up to at least 12K, maybe head towards the 16K in the coming weeks. Mm -hmm. So we'll try and get a report out, say, the end of June. There's a lot of shoes Sounds to good. play with. Yeah, you've got a lot of miles to run, eh? Yeah. I'm either going to be really super thin or I'm just going to be broken. For the sake of testing, you're going to have to do one straight after the other. So I think that's a... Uh, Thanks, Harvey. A 50k day you've got coming up. Yeah, 60k. Well, I think it is, yeah, so I think so. That's the only the only way to do it properly, really. And think? then do it again in a cushion shoe. So uh, you've signed off to do 100k shoe. <laughs> Purely for scientific reasons. I tell you what, I'll use the cushion shoe if I've done 50k <laughs> in a day. That Shuffle to roll round. it over and yeah. sleep on. <laughs> just pop my head on there and have a little snooze. Yeah, yeah, that's. Um, but yeah, it's just, I just I'm I'm intrigued as it kind of feels like I'm having to go to almost like a racing shoe, with the exception of the Nevos, to get the type of shoe I want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm looking at the racing shoes and going, what's odd about those? It's normal. Yeah. Because racing shoes used to be slimmed down. Tell you what I did see. Guy running sub 118 um, at Manchester in a traditional pair of racing shoes. No carbon plate. Yeah. And he was looking really good. And actually probably was a FET 50. Oh, nice. Interesting. So, yes, but it's, yeah. It's just a, why do you want all that stuff under your foot? I really have an old man, aren't I? Well, for me, it makes me a little bit taller. That's why I like it. <laughs> <laughs> is that why Harry at six foot eight or whatever he is runs round in sandals? Yeah, he's just so he's a bit smaller. As low as he can. So he's a bit smaller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But what do you reckon I'm going to find? What do you reckon the outcome's going to be? Of well, I know you like the Scots because you've had them a lot and just yeah. got on with them. They've, yeah, uh, I think. The Sinister you'll like to start with. I don't know when it softens up, whether you'll get on with it as well. Do they soften up much? I imagine that foam will do a little bit. Yeah, you see, I don't like that. Yeah. And then I think the Ultra you'll get on with. I don't know, the Zero Drop for me always takes some getting used to. But you've had quite a few in the past, haven't you? Yeah, so I've worn Zero Drop before and kind of thought it was all right. Yeah. So I'd, I think you'll get on with them for, for the way you run. You're a bit more old school in that sense. <laughs> Sounds like a dig it was. <laughs> yeah, back in the day. <laughs> but yeah, I just wonder actually if there's if there's other of other people out there of a certain age that look at these bigger shoes and go, wow, these are amazing. Can't wait to get more plush, more stuff under my foot. Or if there's people come through the running as I've done and kind of don't get it. I just wonder if I'm a little bit alone. Yeah. I mean, again, does it like I say, nothing, the only the only bad shoe is the shoe you don't get on with. Yeah. Doesn't make any shoe bad just because someone doesn't get on with it. Um, and the only way you can recommend a shoe is based on your own personal experience. Yeah, it's like good hi-fi. Let your ears decide. Or good coffee. Let you, your taste buds. I'd let your taste buds decide. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. No, it's not all right. No, we'll work. <laughs> it it anyway. has to be canned coffee. Oh, can. <laughs> Which comes with canned heat. Anyway, great band. Um, <laughs> anyway, that kind of takes us on to some questions that we've got this week. Oh, yeah. Is Harry going to read the question out so everybody can hear his voice? Yeah. He might. I hope he does it enthusiastically. Yes. Because if he does it in a bit of a dull monotone, it wouldn't, after the training we've had, it wouldn't be right. Mm. I'm sure Would you agree? we'll let him forget it if he does, obviously. It seems to take... <laughs> <laughs> It seems to take me three to four K before I get into my stride. Making five kidneys feel really tough. Any advice? Oh, there's a lot of other questions to ask there, isn't there? Mm. Um, so, <clears throat> okay, some considerations here. Uh, age. Yeah. Okay, it, as we get older, it definitely takes a little bit more time to get warmed up. Mm -hmm. um, and that can also just be from almost like a, a respiratory breath rate point of view. I always... Not always, but I quite often find that sometimes first 10 minutes, sometimes 20 minutes on a run, it just feels like I've kind of got to get 
moving to get it. So for me, I will sometimes walk for a couple of minutes to get everything moving. Um, and then I run for five, 10 minutes and actually stop. Mm -hmm. Just for about a minute to two minutes. Did you walk in that time or just stop completely? Just stop, just stop, do shoelaces up or something like that, or get to an, an appropriate point with a gate of my other view. Mm -hmm. um, and I tend to find that everything settles down and can crack on. Yeah. Of course, the other thing is, I'm telling you guys all the time is, warm up. Is there any warm up before you go out? Um, I think you would agree. One of the biggest things we find is mobilization. Yeah, yeah, I know if I run in the morning, I need to. And even then it takes me 10, 15 minutes before I feel all right. Um, but mobilizing makes so much difference to that. Yeah. Like you might not feel more awake, but just everything doesn't ache and feel sore. Oh, absolutely. It's weird, isn't it? It's funny because I, I didn't know what reaction I was going to get. This morning I was working with two teenagers, mm -hmm. um, boy and girl, and we 20 minutes mobilization. Uh, it was taking them through the, what is mobilization as opposed to so um, it's not a stretching movement it's, it's a range of movement through joints so like swinging your arms around we could do that enthusiastically on camera so I'm saying anybody listening in I'm swinging my arms um, trying not to hit Harvey on the head and um, <laughs> again and um, after the 20 minutes I, su I just suggest they pop the shoes on I sent them around the block and um, around the shop and I, I didn't asked them I said when they came back how did you feel um, and the one comment was that for a minute there it was it felt strange and then I just got into my stride and it felt great and then the other comment was looser easier just nicer and that's with a couple of very fit teenagers mm -hmm. and so and I've also done it with of all things people older than me and you can quite often just do the mobilization running technique improves how they're moving improves it's great so actually looking at your warm-up would be a good thing to do mm -hmm. um, considering um, slowing down is yeah. another way for so the first part of your run just back right off um, and just see where it takes you really I think it's usually something in the warm-up time of day can play a big factor like I, I don't yeah I'm, personally if I run in the morning it takes me longer to get going than in the evening agreed um, uh, I know some people are different to that, but it's yeah. playing with it, getting getting what works for you. Um, run longer than 5k. <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing, is if you're only running a couple of times a week, actually increasing the, the number of times you run in a week. And that doesn't mean you've got to go out and do another 5k. It could just be you just go out for a nice, easy 20 minutes. Yeah. With a little bit of a warm-up before you go. Or even walk. Go for a day's walk. Yeah. Well, yeah. not a day's walk, but a walk that day. So anything that just gets the heart rate back up and... It's stuff like that, really. So it's, it's a number of things to try. So slow down. Um, five or so minutes into your run, actually stop. Do it, maybe walk a little bit, then get going again. Um, probably the key thing, actually, will be to just to try doing a proper warm-up. Yeah. Actually, before you go, you might just be that type of person that just needs a little bit more time before you get out the door. And that's not uncommon. Yeah. It's not uncommon. But obviously, when we run, we want to be dare I say, as relatively comfortable as we can be. Yeah, considering what's going yeah. on. Yeah. Well, so hope that helps. Oh, the other thing is, don't run up a big hill. Yes, or down one, if you can avoid yeah, it. Yeah, just try and start off on the flat as well. Yeah. Right, we'll throw that to our experts and see what they've got to say. Yeah, I think we should, actually. <laughs> Hi, my name's Paddy. I'm one of the coaches from the APC. And uh, I've been asked to answer a couple of the questions that you've sent in. Uh, the first one is, it seems to take me 3 to 4k before I get into my stride, making 5k's feel really tough. Uh, this is a common question that I get asked quite a lot. Um, what I'd suggest is uh, that you introduce a, an effective warm-up routine uh, that will mobilise uh, and activate the body, the muscles and uh, the joints of the body, and uh, also elevate the heart rate before you get into any kind of uh, effort, 5k effort, um, at the start of any run. Um, that'll help you be able to run a bit more freely, help you uh, be, feel a, be, make, help, help make your 5k's feel a bit easier, and uh, yeah, you'll, you should enjoy it a little bit more. Thanks, Very Paddy. interesting answers from yeah, Paddy there. thanks, Paddy. Hmm, mm. An interesting thought on it. Yeah. Copied some of the things I said as well. You must have seen this before we put it in any way. No. Yeah, it's quite amazing. Um, Trying to take pictures. Uh, no, oh, no, no anyway. paparazzi. <laughs> yeah, no, no paparazzi. <laughs> um, I think we need to get in this side of the camera one week. One day, it'll happen. Yeah. 
Um, I know he's got some nice new running tops that he's very proud of, so yeah. he might show them off. Too many with his height, you have to move the camera back. Yeah, yeah, that's true. He'd take up the whole sofa. Yep. That's normally he does that when he's having a little snooze in the afternoon. You know, yeah, just... well, he needs a rest, doesn't he, every now and then? Yeah. But that... <laughs> from <wraps> us. <laughs> oh, yeah. Definitely from us. So what are we going to talk about next week? Well, probably how you've got on with some shoes. Oh, yeah. Um, maybe. Don't know. Yeah, how you recovering from your 100k? Slowly. <laughs> um, yeah. And then, anyone got any other questions? Absolutely. That'll be good. Bro. Right, that's it. Bye for now. Talk to you soon. Ta-ra. Bye.